I maintain my position that the only way we're going to get out of this longer term is by a constitutional convention, because I no longer feel that the federal government has the capacity to actually govern a society as complex as ours. And we need a new system of government to actually be able to accomplish this. What's going on, my crypto friends? And as you can tell by that pretty enticing clip, today we're going to be talking about decentralized systems and better systems that may be the solution to a new type of governance in the United States, in Canada, in every part of the world. Now, today we're going to talk less about politics and more about starfishes and spiders. First things first though, if you guys have missed my video on the US crypto bills, and essentially the bills that are attacking crypto and vice versa, defending crypto, please check out this video. If you're in the US, even if you're not in the US, I'm not in the US, this is important stuff. It's a four minute video and I just go over and explain what's going on. But let's get back now to this starfish and spider example. So I've been reading this book and it's a really good book. I recommend everyone interested in decentralization and cryptocurrency to read this book. But if you cut off a spider's head, it dies, right? And if you cut off a starfish's legs, it'll grow a new one, and that leg can grow into a whole new starfish. Now, what the heck am I talking about, right? Why is this important? Well, in terms of Cardano, there's nothing that you can do really to take it down. We have reached a point of decentralization, and this point means that if you take one validator who's helping run the network down, you know, there's 2000 other ones who are not only going to still be there, but also support to bring new growth back to that missing link. Now, this is the starfish analogy. Cardano and cryptocurrencies follow the starfish approach. Same with the internet. If you cut down half the internet, chances are it's going to grow itself back and probably come back even stronger. You can't take these things down because there's no one spider head or centralized area of attack that would bring it down. Now, there are systems we have today that require centralization. I know this, but there's also a huge use case for decentralization and systems and organizations acting more like starfishes. Cardano, to me, is the shining starfish of the crypto industry. They focus a lot on decentralization. That phase has been completed and Cardano is now 100% decentralized. It's in the power of you and me, all right? It's in the power of everyday people to essentially be a part of the starfish and allow ourselves to expand the network, grow the network, choose what we wanna do with the network. It's set up in a much better way that if it's something like a government and Cardano is our government, or if Cardano was set up like the government, you could just go to the top senators, the top people running it, and you could take it out, right? It's possible. But with a starfish approach, it's very hard to do so. You pretty much have to wipe out 100% of the starfish. You have to almost incinerate it. So why is Cardano the shining starfish? Well, the crypto industry is full of bright blockchains full of amazing people. But to me, Cardano really stands out because of their sole focus on decentralization. They are by far, by far the most decentralized cryptocurrency. And that's because it was a key phase in the roadmap. Now the roadmap, which we're going to go look at now, also has some more phases, right? The phase we're in right now that we're trying to complete is the Gogan era. And it's the smart contract era. But you gotta keep in mind when people say, when smart contracts, when all this, when all that, we're a freaking starfish. We gotta do the starfish things first so we can maintain and go into the future with smart contracts, scaling, and governance. Now, this isn't always gonna be 100% decentralized. There's gonna be points of centralization in a system, but it's leaning more towards the centralization. It's always going to be that way. That's the point of cryptocurrencies in my eyes is to lean more towards decentralization and, and lean away from centralization. 
Now there's always uses for centralization and there's always benefits and pros and cons, but in the starfish example where Cardano is shining here, it's doing things slowly but surely and the right way. So we can maintain this, you know, collective group of people and just maintain a revolution of sorts going forward. Now, Cardano is taking a lot of initiatives to make a system that can't really be brought down, but only made stronger from critical attacks. And what I mean by this is that if you cut a starfish in half, you don't just cut it in half, you make a whole new starfish because you got two now instead of one. That's Cardano's approach. That's what I'm trying to get across here. And that's why I believe Cardano is the shining starfish of cryptocurrency land. But yes, there are a bunch of other starfish in the sea doing great things too. I'm not trying to knock them down, but this is a Cardano channel. I'm talking about Cardano, and that's what I wanted to get across today. I'll leave a link to the book down in the description, The Starfish and the Spider, if you want to check it out yourself. That's all I have to say for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this little episode of Cardano Daily. Definitely check out my last video linked in the description about U.S. infrastructure bill and how it affects crypto. Anyways, see you guys in the next one. It's been your friend Jack. Peace out.